In 2009, a modest conference hall in Cologne, Germany, buzzed with anticipation. Among the attendees, a young developer named Ryan Dahl prepared to share an idea that had consumed him for months. With a mix of excitement and nervous energy, Ryan stepped forward and introduced Node.js, a JavaScript runtime for servers. At its core, Node.js tackled a common problem, slow, inefficient servers struggling under heavy loads. His solution? A system built on asynchronous non-blocking I.O., allowing servers to handle multiple requests simultaneously. To demonstrate, Ryan launched a real-time chat server. Browsers connected, and within moments, the room was chatting, live messages appearing instantly on their screens. For many in the audience, this was a revelation. JavaScript wasn't just for browsers anymore. That moment wasn't the start of Node.js journey, nor its end, but it marked the beginning of its rise. Ryan's path to Node.js was anything but straightforward. In upstate New York, Ryan had been a PhD student studying mathematics. While he excelled in theoretical work, something felt missing. He moved to South America, where he stumbled into programming through Craigslist gigs. From building snowboarding websites to experimenting with Ruby on Rails, Ryan began exploring deeper programming challenges. His curiosity led him to low-level technologies like Nginx modules. In 2008, Ryan moved to Cologne with his girlfriend Lisa. There, in a quiet, affordable apartment, Ryan found the time to focus on an idea inspired by Google's V8 JavaScript engine. He wanted to use JavaScript to solve a pressing problem, the inefficiency of web servers. But inefficiency isn't just a problem for web servers, it affects databases too. That's where the sponsor of this video, Timescale, steps in. Timescale supercharges PostgreSQL, the world's most trusted database, to handle your most demanding workloads. With automatic partitioning and an advanced hybrid row columnar engine, Timescale delivers up to 350x faster queries and 95% storage reduction, making inefficiency a thing of the past. Whether you're managing time series data, lighting up AI workloads, or creating application dashboards for real-time analytics, Timescale ensures you're building faster, scaling further, and saving more. Plus, a TypeScript SDK is on the way, making it even easier to work with Timescale. Join over 3 million databases already using Timescale and transform how you work with data without leaving Postgres. Visit timescale.com to learn more. By early 2009, the first version of Node.js was taking shape. Node.js's release was exciting, but early adopters quickly ran into a challenge. Sharing and managing libraries was tedious and error-prone. Developers needed a solution to streamline collaboration. At Yahoo, Isaac Schluter faced a similar problem. Tired of juggling PHP for backends and JavaScript for frontends, Isaac envisioned a unified system for sharing Node.js libraries. He built NPM, the Node Package Manager. With NPM, developers could publish and install libraries effortlessly, transforming Node.js from a standalone runtime into a thriving ecosystem. Suddenly, Node.js wasn't just a tool, it was a community. Developers worldwide began contributing, sharing libraries, and building applications in ways they couldn't have imagined before. As Node.js gained popularity, companies like LinkedIn and Netflix adopted it for their systems. For these companies, speed wasn't just a luxury, it was a necessity. Node.js allowed them to handle more traffic with fewer resources. But success came at a price. Requests for features and bug fixes poured in faster than Ryan could handle. Node.js was growing beyond one person's capacity to manage. Enter Joyent, a hosting provider that saw potential in Node.js. They offered Ryan funding and resources, acquiring the project's trademarks and ensuring its continued development. Yet this partnership came with trade-offs. Joyent's corporate priorities sometimes clashed with the community's vision. In its early days, Node.js only ran on macOS and Linux, which limited its reach. Many developers, especially those working with Windows, were unable to adopt it. Bert Belder, a Node.js contributor, took on the challenge of bringing Node.js to Windows. The task was immense. Windows handled asynchronous I.O. differently than other operating systems, requiring a complete rewrite of Node.js's foundations. The solution was LibUV, a cross-platform library that allowed Node.js to run seamlessly on macOS, Linux, and Windows. The effort was painstaking, but the payoff was enormous. Windows compatibility opened the door for countless developers, particularly those from .NET backgrounds. With this move, Node.js's adoption grew exponentially. By 2015, tensions between Joyent and the Node.js community reached a breaking point. Developers felt that corporate control was slowing progress and stifling innovation. The frustration culminated in a fork. IOJS, led by contributors seeking transparency and faster updates, IOJS emerged as a competing version of Node.js. For months, the community was split, but the division also forced reflection. 
Eventually, Node.js and IOJS reunited under the newly formed Node.js Foundation, adopting open governance and re-establishing trust among contributors. This moment wasn't just a resolution, it was a turning point. It ensured that Node.js would remain a project driven by its community, not by corporate interests. After years of leading Node.js, Ryan stepped away. For him, the project had been transformative, but also exhausting. It was the first project I worked on for more than six months, he later said. I'd been doing it for three years. It was time for others to take it forward. Ryan's departure marked the end of an era, but it wasn't the end of his journey. Years later, he returned with a new project, Dino. Dino was Ryan's response to the lessons he'd learned from Node.js. It prioritized security, modern features, and simplicity. While it didn't aim to replace Node.js, it offered developers another powerful option for server-side programming. By 2015, Node.js had grown beyond its roots as a developer's experiment. Its lightweight, event-driven architecture found a natural fit in enterprise systems and cloud hosting. Joyent showcased Node.js's potential by building its cloud services around it, demonstrating how the runtime excelled at handling high concurrency workloads. Enterprises soon followed. Netflix and PayPal cited performance boosts and simpler architectures after adopting Node.js. Uber relied on it for real-time ride-matching systems, while NASA used it to protect astronauts in critical operations. Node.js also became a foundation for microservices. Its modular design allowed companies to build scalable systems by connecting small, focused services seamlessly. Under the Node.js foundation, the platform saw rapid innovation and long-term stability. Major releases like Node.js 4.0 brought modern features and performance upgrades, ensuring its continued relevance. By the late 2010s, Node.js wasn't just a tool for developers, it was critical infrastructure powering applications used by billions worldwide. As Node.js became a staple of modern development, new tools and languages emerged to address its limitations, each contributing fresh ideas to the ecosystem. Bun, a JavaScript runtime built with the Zig programming language, sought to simplify development by combining a runtime, package manager, and bundler into one. Faster than Node.js in many benchmarks, Bun targeted developers looking for speed and streamlined workflows. Meanwhile, outside the JavaScript ecosystem, Rust and Go offered alternative paths. Rust, with its focus on memory safety and concurrency, became a favorite for high-performance systems, while Go's lightweight concurrency model and simplicity made it indispensable for cloud-native applications like Kubernetes and Docker. Tools like EaseBuild, a Go-based JavaScript bundler, and Vite, which improved front-end development workflows, also challenged traditional Node.js-based toolchains, showcasing innovative approaches to developer productivity. Rather than weaken Node.js, these competitors pushed it to evolve. By addressing performance concerns and adopting modern workflows, Node.js maintained its dominance in web development while fostering a healthy, competitive ecosystem. In this thriving environment, developers gained the freedom to choose the best tools for their needs, ensuring continuous innovation across the board. The journey of Node.js has been extraordinary, but what does the future hold? As new technologies emerge, Node.js continues to adapt. With the rise of edge computing, serverless architectures, and real-time applications, Node.js is expected to play a central role in shaping the next era of web and cloud solutions. Already, discussions around optimizing performance for multi-core processes and enhancing compatibility with WASM, WebAssembly, are underway. The community, with its strong emphasis on innovation, is exploring integrations that could redefine how developers build applications. Node.js's modularity and NPM's vast library ecosystem ensure that developers have tools ready for challenges yet to come. But with opportunities come challenges. Balancing legacy support while embracing modern features will test the governance and vision of the Node.js Foundation. And as the ecosystem grows, maintaining a culture of collaboration and inclusivity will be pivotal. Ultimately, the story of Node.js is far from over. Its vibrant community ensures it remains not just a tool, but a movement that empowers developers around the globe to build a better, faster, and more connected digital world.